Okay, hi, it's Dr. Buford. We're just getting started on the right shoulder here. We examined your shoulder before we started, and it was very unstable in virtually every direction we tested it, both to the front and to the back. And now we're getting our first look inside the joint. I just wanted to show you this before we move our camera to the front. This is your biceps tendon here. That looks good. Your rotator cuff is up above, and as we expected, your rotator cuff insertion here looks great. Okay, that's the undersurface of the rotator cuff, particularly the supraspinatus portion of it. And that looks good. As we look down at your biceps anchor, I'm a little concerned that you may have what we call a slap lesion. Look, as I, I pull back on this, you can see how the cartilage is cracked. The tip of that cannula is only about two millimeters, just to give you an idea of size. But you can see how this is evidence that there's been some repetitive kind of traction injury here. And so, um, especially given that you have a very loose shoulder, I think it would help us to stabilize this superior labor might where this bicep tendon has been pulling. Okay, so this is where we're going to be doing the slap lesion. That's usually the last thing we do when we're repairing an unstable shoulder. So you'll see that at the end. Now we're going to go ahead and rotate the camera and look towards the front of the shoulder. And as we look down the front, we can see See if I can manipulate it here. Yeah, you can let me see that real quick. I got it. Okay, so what you see here is um, the labrum is there, it's just very um, deficient in terms of serving as an attachment site for the glenohumeral ligament. So here's the labrum on the edge, it's not very large, and then here's one of the anterior glenohumeral ligaments and so we're going to tighten up this entire area as we push down around we can get all the way through the back of the shoulder and that's a sign of instability as well okay so here's the back of your shoulder and you can see this posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament is pretty lax and as we pull back, we can see, you can look up, as we pull back, we can see that your glenoid looks like an island there. See that? It's just sitting out there in the open. And that's really a tip off that there's ligamentous laxity in the shoulder. When you can see the entire glenoid, you can see the capsular insertion is very medial here. And so this is what a shoulder looks like that's, uh, that, that is uh, at risk for being unstable here. So we're going to get to work. We're going to put the camera in the front and show you how we start to fix things for you. Switching stick again. Okay, so now we're looking from the front to the back. This instru instrument that you see is a rasp, and this, you can let go probably. This allows us to just gently roughen up the posterior capsule. And so we bring this in here, and we just gently sweep like this, just to basically make this like a piece of Velcro so it gets really sticky. And so that's what we're doing here. Again, this is the back of your shoulder. We're starting in the back. This ligament here is, is, uh, doesn't have a lot of tension on it. That's the posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. So now we're going to keep doing that. And now we're ready to go ahead and plan our anchor placement. We'll take a spinal needle. Okay, so the way that we pass our, our sutures is using this system. This is what we call a, a suture hook. You can see how it's got a curve to it. It's loaded with a black wire called a super shuttle. And we start by placing the hook here. And then we turn our wrist and we go back into the capsule. Pull straight up on the arm. That's our first bite. And then our second is going to come underneath the labrum. Okay, so we've got our stitch passed, and now we're going to retrieve the partner stitch. This is a particular type of mattress suture that we do when we need a real strong repair and to really tighten up this posterior shoulder. So we'll show you what this looks like when we're done tying it. But that's what we call a figure of eight mattress stitch, and so we'll show the, show the finished result in a minute. 
Okay, so once we tie that suture, it ends up looking like that. I'm happy with the way that looks. We're going to go ahead and get to work in the front of the shoulder next. Okay, here we are looking down the front of the shoulder. And we're using this instrument once again just to rasp or roughen up this anterior capsule. Okay. We're going to use our anchors here because you can see there's been some traction on the cartilage here. See how it's cracked there? And so we want to have a really solid anchor point. So we're going to use these little 1.3 millimeter all suture anchors to tighten up this part of the shoulder. So after doing this a little bit, we're now going to take our guide the blue handle. Yep, don't need the operator. Nope, just the, just the guide. Drill guide. Right in the middle of the mail. And so we'll go ahead and place this guide down. And we're going to try and get an anchor in right about here. Alright, that's what the anchor looks like when it's down in the bone. I'm happy with that. Okay, here's our suture hook now. We're going to end up right about there, so that's how we rehearse the stitch. We place the tip where we'd like to see it come out, and then we just rotate back and go a little bit inferior, and then we go into the capsule like that. That gives us a bite like that. As you see, and then we'll pull back and bring this underneath the labrum. Okay, we're getting ready to make our second pass with our suture hook in the front. You can see we placed a second anchor. Here's the hook. We're going to rotate. I'm going to do that again because I saw too much of the relay sticking out there. So we're going to start there. We're going to rotate. We'll go in right about here. Gives us a pretty good bite there. And that should be a good stitch for you there. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're using this just like that. You got it? That hand goes on this so you can rotate and follow me. The um, We're using this shaver just to remove some of the cartilage so that we can see the subchondral bone here which will start to look yellow once we get it exposed so we're working here you can see there's quite a, a relatively thick layer of cartilage even over the top of the glenoid and the labrum will not heal back to that and so we start our shaver and if you keep watching right there and we just take our time and go slowly And then every once in a while we stop and have a look at our progress. And so we're a little bit better. We'll keep working here. It doesn't take a large area, but we do want to see some of the exposed bone here so that we know we have a place for this to heal. And we're just about there. We'll show you once we have it completely done okay rotate to about five o'clock on that thing okay so you can see now we can see the bone see the yellow bone there and so now we've removed enough cartilage using the shaver and we also used a rasp a little bit um, 
And now we have a good place for this to heal back to. Okay, so here we've got our double loaded anchor in. This is one anchor that has two sutures. And we pull on it, it's very tight. You can see how we have it right in front of the biceps anchor and right in front of the labrum here. Basically right where we cleared off that cartilage. And so now the next step, we're gonna reach in here and take out one of these sutures. We'll take this one out just like that. And now we'll take our suture hook grasper also. But right now we're gonna take our suture hook here. We'll pull back on the relay. And we know we'd like to have this end up coming underneath right about here. So we'll go ahead and hold that. Hold that, two hands so it doesn't move. And you can see the tip of it coming through just right about there. That's great. We're going to feed a bunch in. And now with our grasper, we know that we want to reach around in front. and grab this relay just like that. So that's what we're gonna do here. And now we can back out the needle. Pause. No, the other one, that one hard, long press. Push hard. For Okay, so now we've got that first suture going underneath. We're going to take these two out of the way. And that leaves us a stitch to tie right here. And so we're going to tie this first posterior suture right now. Pause. Hold it longer. Okay, so there's the first knot passed and tied. Now we're going to do it one more time with that suture hook. Mm-hmm. Here's the hook. Hold right about there. Okay, I think we're right there. There it is. We'll go ahead and feed that through. We'll show you some more in a minute. Pause. Hit it longer. Okay, so we've got the slap lesion basically repaired now. As we tug on it, it's not going anywhere. It's got two strong sutures on either side. And we're going to finish up here in a little bit and get you back to the recovery room shortly, okay? So I really hope this does the trick for you. Good luck to you now. Bye-bye.